In this video we will introduce you to the typical and classical structure of an academic paper. The usual model that 90% of the papers in most disciplines follow. We will answer this big question, how do you build an academic paper? So, there are some generic building blocks that you will find in almost every paper. Title, abstract, introduction, literature review, methodology, results, discussion, and conclusion. So first, let's not forget that there is a title, and it is important. It should be simple, clear, short, displaying all the key concepts and straight to the point and powerful. Most of the times, there is an abstract, which synthesizes the main points of the paper. The abstract really is the most important part of your paper. It shows what you achieved, it's the showcase of your paper. When you read it you have to know exactly what the paper is about, what you contributed to. Often after that, you will find some keywords that will classify your paper and help referencing it. You have to think of the right strategy keywords. The paper usually begins with an introduction. The introduction must find a balance between saying everything and keeping some mystery about your research. The most important here is to identify fast and clearly the research question. The next section usually deals with the literature review. This part is not about being exhaustive in your review of the literature, but presenting what is needed to get to the research question. You have to show the limits of previous research to justify the necessity of your own work. If you have an empirical paper, you might then have a methodology section, where you basically explain your research design, whether you're in chemistry, management, sociology, anything. That's the section where you justify the way you proceeded with your research. Why is it relevant? Why does it have to be done in this very specific way, and so on? In some journals you have to be very thorough, in some less so. Depending on the discipline and the journal, this part can also be located at the end of your paper, or even in appendix. For instance, if you are doing a case study, you will want to justify why a single case or a multiple case is best. Why the field you chose is significant, and how you will derive general principles from it. This is the research design. You also have to describe the way you collected data or the way you build your experiment. Explain when, how, to what purpose. All these questions have to be addressed in the methodology section. You have to convince the reader that your measures are valid and reliable, that your methodology is rigorous and scientific. You also need to explain how you conducted your data analysis. In other words, you are explaining when and how you use the data. You should aim to be as simple and clear as possible about your methodology. But above all, the most important is to know your target journal and understand what they expect from you in this matter. Then you have the results section where you present your findings with tables and figures. Once you've presented that, you need to justify how it contributes to the literature you described before. That's the section usually called discussion, and this block is extremely important. Basically, this is where you prove the relevance of your work. In a few words, in the discussion part, you remind the reader of the research question. So, what was this all about? You summarize the analysis, the results, the findings, and then you explain how you contribute to precious literature. You have to justify in what sense you're bringing something new that sheds new light to past literature. What are your contributions? Sometimes these contributions have implications on research, on practice. Then you should make them explicit. And finally, there is the conclusion. The form of the conclusion differs a lot, depending on the journal and on the discipline. Sometimes the conclusion is where you show the limits of your work and how you are planning to address them in future research. Sometimes it's just a short summary of your research question and contributions, it really depends. But the conclusion should be short and powerful in case it's the only thing people read. At the end, you need to reference your bibliography. On writing an academic paper, here are some preliminary tips. First, let's start with the writing order. Did you really think that you had to write the paper in the linear order of the building blocks with the structure as described previously? Abstract, introduction, literature review, and etc. That's a terrible idea, and this is why. Most of the time, you're writing in panic mode, a few hours before a deadline, and you really, really want to go. You're putting all your last efforts in what? 
in the analysis. Because you're thinking, well that's what you're contributing to. That's your research. And then, when you're exhausted, with no more energy, you're writing the discussion and the conclusion in the last effort, and the result is terrible. Also, you might forget what your research question is about, so you conclude on your last thoughts, and not on the core ideas of your paper. Then when the reviewers read the paper, what they find is that your conclusion does not answer your introduction, and your introduction does not even fit your paper. So how to fix this? Well, first let's not write at the very last minute. Second, you should write the final versions of the introduction, the conclusion, and the abstract at the very last. It's important that you understand fully well the core of your paper. That is to say the literature review, the methodology, the results, and your contributions, so that you can properly synthesize everything. Always put huge efforts and energy in them. They are often what most people read first, or worse the only thing that they will read. Another very important tip on writing is that you should always write for a specific research community and for a specific journal, so you know what work they have done before and what work they are interested in. It also helps to adapt to the style of the journal because not everyone writes the same way. American English, for instance, can be seen as mistakes from British journals.